warm good evening to everyone on this very rainy golden uh, october day uh, i am frederick and it's my pleasant duty to welcome each and every one to, to this uh, small meeting small but interesting meeting on the medicinal plants of goa we had tried doing it three or four days earlier when because of uh, net problems we couldn't uh, be successful crash land we are hoping and praying today that everything goes smoothly despite the thunder outside and uh, we have made alternative arrangements thank you for coming thank you for taking the time i will very briefly introduce this uh, the speaker of today evening with a small story so about 20 or 25 years ago we used to visit our friend professor francis borges who taught botany at Dem dempe college and we used to visit his house in in uh, asagaon on the road side and he used to tell us that in his collection he had a total of i forget the number 124 or 300 plant varieties plant species in his collection not not just plants but plant varieties and there used to be two small kids playing around there and one of the small kids today has grown up into being dr mirian borges e lobo so uh, she is a she is an ayurvedic doctor uh, more than that she is known for her plant walks which she takes through different parts of goa including badges and especially badges and she can stop and point to the different plants and their medicinal uses as if she has been doing it from her childhood days which she has so i will not stand in between you and dr mirian i don't have to speak much about her as you listen you will get to know her and her skills increasingly more so i will just uh, ask her to speak uh, she is sitting in uh, in the next chair in the next room uh, in my home in my small home so if suddenly there is a break in transmission and uh, dr mirian turns into frederick norona then you know that we have switched computers so please don't think that i'm masquerading as her at that point i will uh, introduce dr mirian and ask her to take over mirian over to you Thank you so much, Frederick. Uh, it's been a real pleasure and honor to take part in this uh, small little event here today, uh, organized by the Collaborative yeah. Learning Cafe. Yeah. And uh, thank you so much to Frederick Narona for you know giving me this opportunity of speaking as well as welcoming me in his home on this rainy, stormy evening where we can have this uh, talk conducted from. and i just hope that everything goes on without any glitches we are able to communicate uh, very nicely and in a warm manner so uh, not wasting much of time let us get to the talk and uh, we go today on the, you know what we are what we consume okay and uh, we are what we eat we are what we know what we have and especially thinking about the medicinal and plants of of goa and uh, you know there are so many things that uh, we see here in goa and many a times uh, the beaches and uh, alcohol is what everyone is known gnos goa for but i will say i hope now with these plant walks that i'm having people know goa for also the walks and the rich plant heritage that we have very much here in goa uh you know it have been possible me to know so much if it was not for my grand aunt my grand aunt was a, actually a trained nurse by profession she used to work at the parsi hospital in mumbai because of her sister the mother be unwell she in in saligaon uh, in uh, in mumbai and came to live in asika back to her roots and she was not a person just to stick with only doing that she went back to the knowledge that had been imparted to her by her mother and mother it was the knowledge of plants so my grand aunt took over the role of my grandmother because i was a very little child of one and a half when my grandma grand aunt was a grandmother a mother a teacher a teacher of knowledge to me she she holds a great place in my heart and she is the one i can say you know who imparted even these things of which plant to use when to use and where not to use 
you know, we think we plan good, but they also have certain things that we need to be aware of, which I will share more with today. And I thank Dr. Karl for bringing this point to my notes. I will be applying and uh, telling today some of the toxicity also of certain of the things in how we can consume and how we can do. So my grand aunt uh, was this lady who would do medicine to people, uh, especially for fractured bones and uh, for torn ligaments and injured ligaments. Now, as you know, uh, these things were the orthopedic doctors were not that well known at that time. And to go to an orthopedic doctor means you have to go all the way to the Goa Medical College and Hospital. So she would have these something like a pap, as it was called, or a lap, as you can call it in today's uh, terms, as we know. She would make it. And she had a particular time when she would make it, you know. She would look at the phases of the moon. So again, phases of the moon play a big aspect. I will be stressing about it later on in the talk too, on a we collect, how we collect uh, the medicine, herbs, and things like that. So she had a particular time she would make. Then she would rot the medicine in alcohol. That is the pikong zahale, as you call it in Konkani. And she was known for this, you know, to give this medicine especially laborers, carpenters, uh, then people who would, uh, how would you call, who were involved in labor intensive work were the ones who would come and stand in line, queue up to collect this pub. She would give it only once in 15 days, but there was quite a queue of people that would be there waiting for to collect this thing. And, you know, Goa again has this rich heritage of something what we call voyjins, which means a native doctor or a barefoot doctor, but they were feminine. And many people have forgotten the role of these voyagings that existed in our Goan heritage. Uh, you know, so, so to say, the doctors came over, medical doctors came over, and the voyagings got forgotten. Now, voyagings, again, are known for various things. There was one voyaging who was known in Asagao for solely curing poisonous snake bites. She died and with her, the information died too. And this was one of the things which set me uh, why I had to sit down and document and share the information with others. Because if these information dies, imagine how much of it we lose. Because for me, these are living encyclopedias. These voyagings were living encyclopedias. Imagine now with her, died the information on how we could prevent poisonous snake bite people dying from poisonous snake bites so coming back again to my grand aunt so she had this medicines that she would prepare from roughly about 35 to 40 different herbs she would also in this include now the 41 thing ingredient that she would use was a seashell that she would also use for this as you know seashell again being the source of calcium and which would help again the healing aspect of broken bone. So uh, she was known for this. And I got kept with this grand aunt of mine because my parents were both teachers. And what do you do with a child that is hyperactive, with a child that has so many questions, that is questioning every single thing, that sees everything that is not uh, normal maybe in the way or something that she doesn't know, she starts questioning. So my grand aunt discovered that the best way to keep me entertained and occupied was to start telling me about the plants because she somehow found that that was what kept me quiet and interested and had me playing. So she would use these, you know, little, little things that she calls her tools. So that's how first I learned the shape of leaves. Imagine now, just three and a half to four and a half years old is when she started telling me these things because that was the time I got kept with my uh, grand aunt and my parents were going to, uh, you know, teach in school. And I learned the different shapes of leaves first. As I grew a little older, she then started telling me this was good for uh, this problem, this was good for that problem. And that's how we, I got more interested. But if you ask me today, I can say 60% of it, because I was still a kid, as you understand, as I'm telling my age uh, at that time, a lot, 60% of that information has gone. Of course, 20% I have learned from the Ayurvedic aspect, but the local information as we know it, that has gone. 
So I said, no, no matter, come what me, I'm still documenting this information. So that's what I did after I became an Ayurvedic doctor. I have documented some of this information, which will now be shortly coming in my book, as also gone and spoken to some of the older people here in Goa, who are some of them voyagees, and you know, somehow coax them to sharing this information with me because many of them, as you all know, do not like to share this information sometimes to people outside the family. And this is something that, you know, I feel bad about. And sometimes they don't even tell their family members. And that's how this information has just died down. And today we will start with, you know, going forward by taking it and moving to the slides. And uh, we will start with a little bit of the plants that we know them as. And uh, that that she taught me that we can learn about also. And also, if there's one more thing that I would love to suggest, you know, we'll do a few amount of plants. Of course, I'll show slides of some of the plants that are there. But because I would like to concentrate so that everyone can understand to a few plants today. And if you all want to know more, you all are most welcome to come on the walks. Then I'll also be having uh, classes on the online platform. You all can join in anytime when you all like. Just DM me for this. So moving on now to learning about the plants and what we are, what we eat. Now, Goa has such a rich heritage. Okay. Uh, can anyone tell me if you all know any uh, folk story? Stories about plants here in Goa. Uh, anything that you Do you know Adao tree is never planted in front of the house? Now you will say why it's such a lovely fruit tree and so many fruit trees are planted in front of the house. Now the reason being it was shared from generation to generation but I noticed that my generation and the generation after me are not aware of this at all. Okay, it's called as the Adam tree or the Adam, the small Adam's apple because it's like the Adam's apple in a man's throat. That's why it's called as the Adam which means in Portuguese Adam. Okay, the English translation of it. So, uh, the Adao tree uh, is also called as, it comes from Mimisops. So, Mimisops Ilengi is one, and the other Adao tree, I'll share you all the information a little later. Uh, the Adao tree is also from the same family. And now, the Adao tree is never planted in front of the house. The reason be the eldest child, may it be a female or a male, suffered from mental disorders. Uh, that is what it would uh, lead to. And so it was considered unworth or inauspicious, bad. So that's why uh, never was it planted in the house. Now, as I grew up, it was always planted to the side. I noticed it was to the right hand side of our, my grand aunt's house. And she never shared this with me. But curiosity got the better of me when she passed away and saw an older person. And the older person shared it with me and told me, one generation older than me, they shared it with me and told me that this was in why it was never planted in front of the house. And, uh, it's a sad part of the story, but I'll also my personal experience that I noticed in someone else's where the Adao tree is in the backyard of that person's house, but a house came up much later on in life and it became the front of that person's house. And that person's elder child has a mental defect. So, you know, it was not just simply said. These things were noticed. Imagine at a time when there were no microscopes. There were no things to study and research and find out why. They knew these things. So like this, even they say the chipo tree should not be planted in front of the house because it is very prosperity. It is again at the back or at the side. In my parents' place, chipo tree is behind the house. So, you know, these interesting anecdotes and folk is also where on the uh, walks that I conduct. Now, coming back to the slides, and we'll start with today's talk because I guess everyone is eagerly waiting to know uh, about you know what we eat, how we eat, and what we can. So, uh, the first slide as we move on is you uh, are okay, the herb and medicinal plants, okay, the medicinal and edible plants of Goa. We move on to the next slide. Okay, so as you can see here, we are choices that we make. We are the choices of food that we eat. As you see here, there is uh, pizza, burgers, and things like that. And there's also natural foods 
natural healthy foods that we get okay so the choices that we make actually uh, cease to dna including the dna of what our body gets from so if we consume good food, we consume plant based food we know how what to consume we can even see that we walk in good health and this is what our ancestors tried to convey to us the one important secret is to see what is growing around at that particular time then we consume that at that particular time again we see certain things growing in the rainy season that we do not see in the winter and we see certain things that we can winter season and we don't see them in the summer season we see certain berries and certain lovely summer fruits that come in the summer season and we see that they are not there in the rainy season so each thing is there for a certain reason a certain purpose and to help supplement our body's immunity that is why certain foods in certain seasons we will be dealing with some of them so we'll move on to the next slide and we'll start with uh, what i will talk about what we have just experienced and are experiencing the wild monsoon season as you can see here in these slides we have something that is karano we have something that we have what we call as pamelo we have the red pumpkin or as some people know as the pumpkin that is put for matoi or i am told by some people it was also called as pedru because of the red color and you see here uh, in the last slide the vegetables that were offered at the time of gauri puja now time of gauri puja there are five vegetables that are added, which i will be dealing dealing with importance and significance okay vegetable i just a quick name check we doing with chitora as one of them that is used for gauri puja we talking about kuduchi chibaji we talking about the morning we are talk about also tender leaves of the pumpkin the tender leaves of the alshande okay the traditional local goan we come to the next slide the wild is you know what really makes me the most happy because nature has this pharmacy in our backyard and we are not even tell you which is the first plant and medicine so the next slide is something that is very interesting and i'm going to do a little bit more in detail about uh and it is the slide that you may, many many of you must have seen it the next slide is the slide of cassia tora okay cassia tora is a plant that is grown so widely okay we move on to the exposure of colocasia colocasia we deal with a little later uh, so cassia tora as we know cassia tora is a plant that we call as takurochi bhaji and takurochi bhaji grows everywhere 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 literally everywhere it grows in our back front yard it grows in the field it grows at the sides of the fields it grows in the bayens okay so cassia tora a kuduchi bhaji is what is a vegetable that is most commonly used by everyone from the previous generation but our generation and the generation after us suddenly didn't like the taste of that vegetable and you know didn't know how to consume it didn't know when to consume it and these things got long forgotten so now Taichirochi bhaji, cassia tora, can be consumed very nicely days only. Please remember that because you know there are certain things that we call toxicity. Certain things of the body is not used to it. We are, uh, you know, getting used to the fact that uh, yes, these vegetables we are going to introduce them. So the you know the things such as. Uh, we are not aware of how the vegetable to use so we are not know so initially what i would suggest is start off by using just five leaves five leaves when i say okay uh, is just about five to six leaves so you can just use them maybe in soup use them in dal and see how you like the taste or use them as uh, tapa or bhaji is something that you can try of it that's what you like the best the best thing is you know take the cassia tora leaf and make a uh, dip it in a nice batter of chana dal and once you have dip, dipped it in chana dal batter just um, allow it uh, put it dip it into the oil and you can consume it 
though I would not suggest doing it, but if you want to get used to the taste and you know see how your body is reacting to it, you can uh, as well consume it like this. You can also consume it in the form of an omelet. You can also you know make small little pieces, um, make small little uh, pieces of this with. And uh, and then add it to your uh, you know omelet as a flavoring. You can add it to uh, soups. Okay, add right. So you can I repeat, please pay attention. Just use it once in ten days because you know the body needs to get used to these medicine uh, these uh, vegetables because they are not just vegetables. Uh, I you know in rainy season what happens. We get frequent colds. Okay, we get infections. So when we go out, elders would always tell us, you know, wear slippers, don't get wet. See that your feet don't get wet. You get toe infections. You get uh, pus coming out from the knees and things like that. What do we do? We first thing we go. So, uh, you know, we'll go for antifungals and we'll go for creams and lotions and things like that, which will take care of fungal infections or, you know, consume antibiotics. So I will suggest to you, do not do this immediately if you, uh, unless it is got pussy and you really need to see a doctor. Okay, or take your antibiotics if you have been advised by the doctor, because as a doctor, I will tell you, if you have been advised your antibiotic, consume the antibiotic for five days. Because uh, remember, if the infection is too much and if your immunity is not good enough, then you need to do emergency medicine first. So I, have, you know, my advice would be take your antibiotic, but side by side, consume this vegetable and consume it for like once in 10 days, at least for a period of one month. It will see to it that you do not get infections as well as it will boost your immunity. Besides that, now the Cassiotora is also a blood purifier. It is also a hepatoprotective as it is called. It is very good for those who suffer from constipation and do not get a good morning. Okay, so you can consume this as a vegetable to get a really good morning. And I... You know, I love the way it is said. Said in Marathi for a good morning. It is said like Sukakar Pahate Sati things. So, and this is how you can consume cassette or vegetable. It is also good for the for cardio medicine let me be specific and say it again because many a times people say oh someone told me this is good you said that this was good and i stopped my cardiac medicine no please consume it side by side for more medicine how can you contact an ayurvedic doctor that is how you will know how you can consume medicine and plants together okay so uh, please be careful do not consume it more than twice a week okay twice a week if it is consumed uh, it will lead to you getting, you know, heat, gurmi in the body. So please be careful. See that you do not uh, consume it more than twice. So this is the toxicity of it, you know. You, if you eat too much of it, then you can get too much of heat. Next slide. Yeah, so uh, we'll move on now to the next slide. And as you can see here is the silver coxcomb. The silver coxcomb uh, is what we simple words that is known in Konkani as kudukichi bhaji. Now kudukichi bhaji or pidukichi bhaji as many people know. Look how beautiful these flowers are. Now silver coxcomb grows especially during the rainy season months. What happens? We consume less water. And uh, one doesn't realize when one consumes less water what happens during the rainy season. We think, oh, it's nice in rainy season. As a doctor, I have this one thing to say. You know, when we... Uh, do not, uh, how would you say, do not drink sufficient water. The first thing that happens is that you will end up getting kidney stones. 
and that is how doctors have a bee line of patients coming in the rainy season for kidney stones if we had to only do one thing consume sufficient amount of water and uh, and also if we had to just have this vegetable called as kuduki chi bhaji kuduki chi bhaji can be consumed even once in twice uh, you know once uh, in a week or even twice a week now kuduki chi bhaji doesn't have any known toxicity i've also done a study on this to find out as yet and it is also in fact gone for research medicine they have uh, studying more about this in certain institutes in india to find how it can be used not just as vegetable but also as medicine so here in our backyard as you will see these beautiful flowers lining the fields these days and lining the you know plateaus lining uh, our backyards lining our front yards so just watch out for the leaves of this vegetable and that is when they should be consumed now it is already zoon as it is said or it is mature that's why these flowers appear so now is not when you should consume but in the start of the rains in the month of june and in the month of july these two months is when you can consume the silver cox comb or the kuduki chi bhaji now kuduki chi bhaji again can be consumed as a bhaji by itself or you can consume it with moog dal okay i'm giving you a recipe also here you can add a little bit of garlic to it little bit of onion and the uh, how else would, would you like to make it more appetizing if you are like a little garam masala you can use i don't use garam masala i just use a bit of uh, onion garlic uh, a hint of coconut oil okay just for the seasoning and one chili max that's how i can love to consume this vegetable no dal and if sometimes i'm in the mood then i would just sprinkle a little bit of fresh grated coconut that's all how i consume this vegetable so you get healthy fats from the grated coconut and you have this natural uh, good diuretic as i call it so this little plant which is so incons inconspicuously growing in the rains okay can be consumed as a nice diuretic it helps prevent formation of stones okay and it is also again good for those suffering from constipation again that's how it is there in the rains and in a leafy vegetable it has very high fiber content it is also good to you know as a liver protective and it also helps regulate not to great extent but to some extent the blood sugar levels so here you go you have a vegetable that is so beautiful so uh, wonderful and i remember using these little flowers also in my bouquet how many remember that you know kids daddy gather for the novenas the masses that are there from the first uh, first to the uh, 7th of september in fact they start from august end of august till the 7th of september nicely kids going carrying flowers to church for the uh, the you know the feast that is going to be there on the 8th of september and you know these little things i would always include these flowers in my bouquet little knowing what i was doing at that time other than it was just so beautiful and it would just add to uh, the beauty of the whole thing uh, the whole you know the whole bouquet of it so there you go you have things that may have trigger childhood memories for us things that will trigger certain uh, you know membranes that we would use a part of this plant but without knowing that even the leaves could be consumed as a vegetable so i hope i'm also taking some of you all down memory lane and you know bringing a smile to some of your faces making you all remember certain things that you all did as kids uh and triggering off certain memories so we'll move on to the next vegetable and again let me talk that this is one of the vegetable as i mentioned earlier that is used for gauri puja and it is also told by the adas if you have not consumed it by in the rains at least once you consume it during this time of gauri puja which is one day before the chaturthi the next vegetable as you see here brahmi it is so rampantly you know known to uh, available in goa and we see it so much you know in the fields and one thing i'll tell you all uh, this vegetable is what is you loved by the 
cows. The cows love eating this vegetable. And you'll wonder what it is about the cows that they know that this vegetable is such a good vegetable. And how they have certain memories or how do they have certain things that attracts them towards this vegetable. So I was asking the local people, why do the cows eat this vegetable? And they told me this thing is not only good for the gut, but it also helps their milk production. So there you go. Now you know why it is the favorite of the cows also. But coming back to us, this vegetable is only known by us as something that it is good for the brain and good for getting sleep. Now you can even consume it as a vegetable that you know what is its benefits, you can consume it. So this vegetable is as good as those, you know, having Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, memory loss, dementia, old age related problems, even for children. Okay, you can use this little plant, such a small little dainty little plant that is just growing, creeping around, just skimping through the ground and growing. And you can consume this as a vegetable. Now, this vegetable, if you have any time anyone has eaten as bitter, sour in taste, you just eaten it raw. You can even eat this as a salad. But just again, when you're eating these leaves as a salad, use five to six leaves only. Okay. Just remember, don't try to eat more. Or if you want to eat them raw, do it once a week. Just consume two to three leaves once a week along with your breakfast raw if you want to eat. Because, you know, that is the way it is consumed in a much better manner. When I why I tell it raw is because Brahmi Swas is used in Ayurvedic medicines. Now you will say, oh, so yes, being an Ayurvedic doctor, here is where I come along with also combining Ayurvedic medicine with local medicine. And this was why you can, this is one of the only vegetables that I'll say can be used raw. The rest, it is always good if you consume them cooked. So this is just the one single vegetable that can be used raw for the simple reason that its effect is also great when it is consumed raw. In fact, it is used as a, a vehicle to consume certain of the tablets that we give certain patients. So I'm not mentioning that in detail because that is always left to the discretion of the doctor when they are prescribing. But you can consume this as omelette. You can consume this in uh, with omelettes. You can consume this as a vegetable by itself. You can consume this in dals, sambars. Okay. Again, a good way of combining this in vegetable is with jackfruit seeds, which everyone likes. So you have the nutty flavor from the seed and the vegetable flavor. Because many people sometimes do not like the vegetable taste. What they'll say, tar, tar, torn ko hai lakta. This is a konkani word that is used. So that's why you can consume this with a jackfruit uh, seed. Moving on to the next slide. So, you know, the next slide we will see and we will do. So, as I mentioned earlier, this is the Cassiotora and I've already spoken about the Cassiotora. So, you already know that Cassiotora benefits. Uh, this is what the Cassiotora plant looks like. So, earlier uh, the Cassiotora slide had not appeared. So, this is the Cassiotora plant or the Taukolachi Bhaji, which I mentioned is antibiotic, which I also mentioned is uh, good for the blood, good as a liver protective. Also good for those suffering from constipation and good for infections. We'll move to the next slide. Yes. Now, this is something I would really, really love spending some time talking about. You see these beautiful blue color flowers these days. Again, if you move to a piece of, uh, uh, you know, uh, just a little away from the roadside, not so much where the road is, but a little away from the roadside, you'll see these lovely tower-like flowers coming from this plant. This is called as the blue flowered glory tree. Or Bharangi, as some people know it, know, locally. Bringi, Bharangi are the local names that I've picked up from people in Walpoi and people in uh, Alona, Nashnola, all the older folks that are there. They, this is what they call this plant. Now, this plant, many people have long forgotten the use of this as a vegetable. In fact, no one knows my generation and the previous generation at all that this plant is used as a vegetable. 
So when it reaches this stage as a picture, this it cannot be used as a vegetable. Max to max, you can use the flowers as it. But observe the leaves of this plant. They have got serrations, and this plant is called as clerodendrum serratum. Okay, that's how the serrations comes for its species names: clerodendrum serratum, and that is what is uh, the Latin name of this plant. Now the uses of this plant. how it got forgotten and again why it's in the rains in the rains what happens you get cold fever respiratory problems so this vegetable is very good to be consumed you consume just the tender leaves of this vegetable whoever's come for my walks will know that i give them these leaves to taste and the first thing is oh such a sharp taste it is very flavorful and uh, very spicy to taste when you taste it raw So again, use just five to six leaves. I have suggested for some people to use it as a kapha. One of them who came on the walk, she even made a paste of this with her dosa batter and added to the dosa. She of course sent me a picture of that, and she said the dosa tasted quite flavorful. So again, there you go. You have a cooking suggestion how this can be used. Now this plant, coming back to its medicinal use, is good to be consumed for those suffering from cold, fever. okay not again you know acute high rise fever but once you have recovered from fever you can consume it okay uh, you can also consume it for those suffering from cough and what is used in ayurvedic medicine is the root of this plant in fact it is very beneficial to make certain asavas and arishtas which are prescribed by an ayurvedic doctor to the patients so again coming back to how much to consume and because of its toxicity because of what it may contain and how we consume it being modern generation and our bodies are not used to it consume it just once in 10 days or once in 15 days please please remember these things that i'm sharing you know because many times whenever you tell people that this is good for this this is good for that you we tend to sometimes overdo these things and as a saying goes too much of a good thing is a bad thing so please remember consume it once in 10 days or once in 15 days please don't forget i'm again repeating i'm keeping on repeating with each plant okay because sometimes these things tend to cause toxicity either to lung to liver or to kidney and these are are very important organs of the body as a doctor i'll tell you they are the organs of excretion so they are the ones that take a hit if we do not consume things because see the body is not used to having this we have made a body so accustomed to having tomatoes brinjals carrots which is the mundane vegetables that are there you know in available for us forgetting what was our heritage in the forest so introduce these vegetables very slowly maybe it will take a period of 1 to 2 years for your body to get accustomed uh to having this vegetables so take your time you know take your time let your body get used to having these vegetables maybe for this season you all can start off with just having two vegetables not a problem go ahead and do it you can consume these later on the next year maybe you can consume them because there are so many other vegetables that are also there okay so we'll move on to the next slide so while we are waiting here there is one thing that i would like to suggest you know and which is in the point that i have mentioned uh, later on like how do we see the future of food in goa you know the future of food in goa i would say is like you know if we can start shifting our focus from the normal vegetables that we see which are not local or hyper local as we call it the vegetables that we have currently now in the market you know shifting our focus to when we see current day available or a sweet potato available you know we see these vegetables that are uh, available for us in the market we can start having them okay consume these vegetables consume them as instead of potato you know you can use because do you know that potato is not of origin that is a foreign import and so like you can certain people you know make so certain Hello? people's ideas which they have and how you see uh, things uh you can hear me yeah. okay 
Uh, so, so what I would suggest is, you know, if we can move to consuming these vegetables and consuming these as, you know, foods, what we will be doing when we see these things happening. If we could do a quick movement of the slide, Savio, to move on to the next slide after the blue glory flower. Okay, so what I would suggest is, you know, when we are talking about the future of food in Goa, what happens when we consume these foods in our backyard? Consume these foods that are there very much available for us. The first thing that we do, we cut short the carbon imprint that is happening. You know, so much is being spoken about conservation, about climate change. And yes, but what are we doing as individuals towards it? Uh, because... So much of petrochemical is used and so much of plastic is used to bring those vegetables from where it is grown to our markets here, to our local markets here. So basically what vegetables we are having are vegetables that are not local to us and not even sometimes good for our immunity and good for what they are said to be good for. So what is happening is we are just using 30% of what the vegetable would give us as benefits to the body. But when we consume hyperlocal vegetables or local vegetables, we can get almost 70 to 80% of the benefits from these vegetables. So there you go. Not just are we reducing the carbon imprint because again, that much less, you know, vegetables would get transported into Goa because come on, let's admit it, 70 to 80 to, you know, I'm told not even 70 to 80, it's almost 90% of the vegetables from Goa are coming from outside Goa. So when we start consuming our own local vegetables, there will not only be a, like, you know, people uh, suffering from scarcity of vegetables as what happened during the first lockdown, because now we are getting aware of the vegetables in our backyard. So, you know, you are getting to know the things that you can use very much here. And also you are having the vegetables. It's not that you're going to suffer from a dearth of vegetables. So that's one thing. Carbon imprint becomes less. Secondly, you are uh, consuming it directly from the tree. Okay, so it is not being put in a plastic and you're not buying it from the shelves of a supermarket. So again, we are reducing the use of single use plastics, which we have to be so concerned about now. I mean, so many, uh, there are so many platforms in which people are telling not to consume single use plastics, even supermarkets now itself, if you go there, they get they are welcoming us if we take our own containers to, the, you know, carry the stuff. So much of zero waste stores getting set up. So today's talk, I'm going to talk about, you know, these even little, little things where we can make a difference as individuals because of the choices that we are making among the foods that we consume. So this is how, you know, I see our choices even affecting the future of food here in Goa and how we support the local farmers. Because again, they are going to grow all Sundays. Many a times they sell it at such a cheap rate. Because I remember once convincing a certain farmer where I stay, uh, currently in Sangolda, to turn organic. He turned organic. In the first year, he didn't get that much people buying his stuff because he didn't know how to pre present and sell his stuff. So I told him, OK, I'll sell it for you. In the second year, he got a better you know, output and better people coming and buying his things. So like this, let us encourage small farmers and growers by buying things locally. So from them also, we can go and ask them if we can pick up the old Sunday tender leaves. Again, we are buying it straight from the farmer. We are encouraging the farmer to grow more such, you know, plants. And we are getting directly without any plastic covering it. So again, we are preventing single-use plastics. Right? So, I mean, just think about how many things are we doing along the way. We are not just, uh, you know, preaching this from the hilltops and things are not just being done. But we ourselves as individuals are making these healthy choices. And these little, little things that we go, go a long way in the footprints that we are living, uh, leaving for our children to follow in. Our children are seeing the choices that we make and they themselves are joining in these. And what I like so much better is, you know, that I see so many chefs now uh, around India and, uh, you know, all over getting more interested in local vegetables. We just now, sometime uh, two weeks back, two weeks to, uh, two weeks, roughly two weeks back, a chef that came to Goa and, you know, spoke to the locals, covered the local foraging vegetables. He covered traditional Goan things that were there. 
So yes, pastis the nata is also one of our go local Goan foods. Bakalyao is also one of our Goan foods. But why did we forget what were the local Goan vegetables? Let us keep both the traditions going in hand in hand, you know, and keep both the knowledge of the local vegetables that are there as well as these beautiful and you know na the names of these dishes are so good. They bring a the uh, you know water to our tongue. Come on, who doesn't like a bolina? Who doesn't like a babinka? But yes, also let's bring these vegetables uh, back to our, you know, food bowl, back to our plates, and back from farm to table where we are encouraging again the farmer because that's what they are growing. They are growing the alsande. Some of them are growing pumpkins. So when we get the tender leaves from them, they are also happy that they are getting a little bit of money. We are also getting good quality vegetables. You know here that they are because we see where they are growing, right? You watch and you see. So there is very less or even no amount of pesticide used. They are using cow dung. So it's so much good. And these uh, vegetables that we are consuming are really beneficial to our body. Okay, so that benefits our body so much more. And again, what is the significance of these vegetables and how do we have these vegetables at a particular time? I think that no better festival that would convey you know, and a period of time in the calendar. Uh, that would be there. If we could get the slide, Savio, of that which says Stra. Savio, what Stra? Savio, what Stra? This the slide that says the month of Shravan. If we could get onto that slide, and uh, you know, when I'm speaking, I'm speaking of Shravan because for me, that month that is the most time, and uh, they love eating uh, veg during this time because they are told from. Generation. Can you just repeat? Your voice was not so clear. Can you just tell me which slide to go to? To that generation, they should go with. Now, do you know during this time of Ravan, there were certain amount of vegetables that were there, which also helped you get your profit. Yeah, Ravan, we are. At Uh, hello, Milan. The right okay. slide. Right now. Uh, Savio, keep it at this slide. Uh, so this is, you know, the lovely flowers, as it is called, the flowers that are offered to Chaturthi. Uh, you know, during the. Hello. Yeah, the voice is breaking in between, but sometimes it is like quite okay for a few yeah. seconds. It okay. is okay, and then so again it is breaking. Okay, is now okay? Is it okay now? Yeah, 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 better. Yeah, so Shravan is a time when yeah. So Shravan is a time which celebrates the biodiversity of this little state of ours of Goa. It is a time time when the silly like as in the form of celebration, these vegetables are con consumed compulsively because they have also protein. Now, you know the kundu as one of the things that is there, and you can easily have it. So that is why these vegetables were told to be consumed during the month of Shravan. Now, what happened is everybody became so religiously uh, conscious. They did it as a form of religion. And it got forgotten that it was mentioned to be done as a way of consuming it of only plain vegetable. Okay. And how it was beneficial for the body. So we move on to the next slide and we'll see what are the things that can be consumed for during this time. So, as I mentioned earlier, Kudukichi Bhaji, Taikuro Bhaji or the Cassiotora, the silver coxcomb, the Moringa leaves, 
Now, during this time, one consumes the moringa leaves or the drumstick leaves. This is what can be consumed. We also get drumsticks during. this time and the drumsticks are very very good and very effective removes poison from the body i repeat again that which removes poison from the body okay that is how good the drumstick vegetable is especially Vegetable can be consumed in the form of a sambar and dal. Savio, can you hear? Okay. So it can be consumed as dal. It can be consumed as sambar, and also it can be consumed in the form of vegetable. Also use, please. I'm telling everyone as post recovery food. So, if you are suffering, you know, recovering from fever, you are recovering from cold, you are recovering from post-COVID infection, okay? You are recovering, or you have had TB, and you are taking your TB. Medicine, please consume this vegetable because this is like a blood cleanse. It is all. The drumstick vegetable is anti-cancer in nature, but again, I'll suggest use it just twice a week. Don't have it more than that. Okay. My personal experience that I would like to share with you is post-COVID when I was recovering, I consumed this vegetable and it even helped me because I didn't have non-veg during that time as a personal choice. Okay. Uh, I didn't want to post-recovery have much of non-veg. I did have the egg that had to be consumed and told, but I consumed this. Okay, vegetable, this simple humble drumstick. Pod, okay, and I consumed it as a vegetable, plain boiled it with a little bit of garlic and onion, with no chili, okay, with a little bit of coconut oil, and it was so good and nutritious to my body. The weakness that I felt even in my bones, you know, that happened during my recovery time, all disappeared. So I would like to share this as my personal experience of the drumstick vegetable with you all. Many a times, women suffer from uh, dysmenorrhea. Okay, uh, or painful periods, or you know PMS. The one go-to vegetable I'll tell you to have is the drumstick vegetable. Uh, so this is one thing that you should consume. Okay, the drumstick vegetable. And again, uh, coming back to the next slide as we move. So the next slide we also show about Shrapan and how the celebration of this biodiversity. So these people at that time, we can move on also to the next slide, Savio. And at that time, people did not know how to convey. So you had Napanchmi, which again celebrated. You take a break from working very hard. And what they told the farmer, because at that time farming was the main occupation, do not go. Do not go to the field that day. You rest. Why? They said that the snake will come and bite you if you went there in the field. That was the way of, you know, dissuading the farmer from working from that day, giving him rest to his body. And how best to do it? Put it in a nice turmeric leaf, which is also antibiotic in nature, which is antibacterial, okay, which will prevent infections. Put the rice jaggery, which was nutritious and you know, good for the body. Put it nicely in the form of a patoi or in the form of a dhone, and it was consumed by the farmer on that day. So Nag Panchmi festival again came in. Now also, though many uh, uh, communities in Goa do not do it on the eighth of September, I know the Mangaloreans because I've been interacting with a lot of people trying to document about this vegetable knowledge from different states, different communities. So the Christians uh, community in Mangalore on the eighth of September go veg. Many communities there, Christian communities in Mangalore, go wedge on the 8th of September and like an onam platter on the nana leaf, they have only wedge food, which will also have a little bit of patoi. So what remained here on the 15th of August, on the 8th of uh, September, we only 
continued having the patoi and got forgotten about the veg. So these little things, little festivals, festivals always became a celebration of what was grown in the farm. Okay, remember this, but this knowledge got wiped out from one when passing on from one generation to the other. What remained? Only celebrate the festivity. What remained? Only celebrate the festival. This has to be done. That has to be done. Why it is good for the body? What is the way it helps the body? These, the science of these things got forgotten. And my walks, my humble attempt in these things that I'm documenting is reviving this information, bringing back to our memory, sharing with the younger generation this beautiful science that was there behind why we consumed these vegetables. Okay, we'll move on to the next slide. How many know that during the time of Christmas, there was something called as manare that was uh, given, which was actually made from pumpkin that was cooked, then made into a vodi, and you know, then it was deep fried and it was given. It was part of the kuswar that was given from one family to the other in the celebration of the Christmas kuswar. Has in, does anybody know what is kuswar also? Kuswar is just a very small Govan custom where one Christian family would give another family in the neighborhood, be it Christian or be it of any other community, we would celebrate the joy and give it to someone else, just like how it is done during Chaturthi and Diwali. And that is how the communities existed, interacting between the community. Is, you know, this interaction. So coming back again, it was the humble little pumpkin that was grown in your field that was then cooked, that was harvested in a month post the valley and then nicely allowed to remain, formed into a body and made as a part of the kuswa to be shared with from one family to another, which again has got forgotten. So yesterday when I was asked by someone, how are the different festivals, you know, foods linked to festivals and I told her this. And she was pretty surprised. She's saying, my goodness, I mean, who knew the the Kuswar connection is gone. Uh, I think back. Yeah. So uh, these were very the bright in the Hindu community. Carry the voyage for the first festival, the first Chaturthi festival in this. And that is how, again, they preserved this tradition without sharing why this was done, you know, and what is the significance of how you carried the sweets made from the fruit again of the orchard that you had, made with the turmeric leaves that you had, with the jackfruit leaves. Everything got forgotten, and the joys of the women gathering together during the time of the festival and how these simple traditions simple festivals helped in preserving helped in preserving our heritage and work so if we can do little things you know knowing how our festivals how our uh, you know different celebrations that were there may even our festivals and i should not forget to mention maurice here this who has tried his little best to revive these little festivals that have been there and he's known as the festakar man and he has brought the Patoi Chefes, the Ponsa Chefes, and he he has done such a good job. And you know, I, I am so much in awe of these little things being done over the years. You know, by just by zero spending money, I love the idea that he has. And if anyone can carry forward, you know, these ideas, so many things happen. happening here in Goa and if we can only celebrate each other in the little things everyone is doing even I should not forget you know the good for pain and he's doing such a lovely job in promoting that in the form of Feni and again 
chef avinash martins at kavatina who is also having something called as the table in the hills where he presents food and foraged food i should not forget to mention all these people that are doing things to preserve our local go and vegetables and i'm so happy that so many people are coming to the fore so many people are doing these little little things in different ways where they are preserving the hyper local vegetables so my suggestion would be you know switch a little bit of your palate but as i suggested once in 10 days to once in 12 days okay change a little bit of the vegetables that you all are using and use these little vegetables that can be had okay and again what can you all do certain things cannot be you know transferred like if you try growing kudu kichi bhaji in your house it does take in planting in a plot one sad thing i will say it doesn't grow so when you see it in the garden or you see it in your backyard water it over there okay water the plant over there what the it over there because you cannot transfer and put it in a uh, pot grow it over there again the blue glory this is growing home it only grows during this time the berries go i have a walk that i devote only to the summer berries go that is the kanta the tsunna the uh, you know uh, the boras the adao i devote this walk only to that and in fact children love coming for this walk because these walk these fruits i compare them in nutritive value even greater to the blueberries we are so uh, you know quick to go and buy 100 grams or 50 grams of blueberries at 400 rupees and the humble berry that is growing in our backyard that is growing in the by lanes we forget it yes sara also yes and we can now i see that there are a lot of people are uh, you know eagerly waiting to ask a lot of questions so i am ready for any questions that you all will have and ready to answer your question yeah hello this is frederick again uh, so a new yeah address. frederick go ahead or you can already uh, Or, or we can even ask in the chat box uh, if you have any queries that uh, that need to be addressed. Yeah, you all can type it in the chat box, or if you all want, you all can just raise your hands and then we'll call your uh, call your name out. You all can unmute yourself and talk directly also. Maybe to set the ball rolling, if I could just ask one query: uh, What is Uh, okay, Amika, go first, please. Doctor Mary, I have a question. Uh, are you coming out with a book, or do you already have a book? Sorry, could you repeat that? Uh, are you coming out with a book? Is uh, does Doctor Mary Ann already have a book, or is she going to come out with a book with all this that she just told us? i'm coming out with a book i'm coming out with a book with all of this okay to add to that uh, what are the sources of this kind of information on uh, medicinal plants of goa or the region okay to who mention it sadly there is hardly any sources left so this was you know what the that most 80% the information that i have Share. Ed today. Is from word of mouth. 
out my documentation. <laughs> Yes, so just pray that everything goes well and then you know we can get the book out soon personal can you hear me i could hear only could the hear last me. one okay okay so i just say that you know there've been which around the way so i hope before the year end year is up we have the book ready soon Yeah, yeah. Can, Sabi, can you hear me? Okay. Okay. The next question. Okay. Um. There was one question in the chat box. Selma Vegas asked, Sabi. "Are there different varieties of the Brah Brahmi plant?" You know what? Is I I can't. What are they? are there the different varieties of the brahmi plant yes so now there is brahmi and there is brahmi uh, there are two varieties so what was here now what i show this slide is centella asiatica and the real brahmi as it is called is bacopa moneri which has got smaller and finer leaves so yes there are two varieties of the brahmi plant and the latin names are also different so the final leaf smaller ones is bacopa moneri the one that i showed in the slide is centella asiatica okay actually the next question was something like that like somebody asked was it asia's uh, sorry centella centella what is it <laughs> yeah yeah okay. and he just uh, said it off Okay, okay. Okay. I don't think there are any more questions in the chat box. So okay. if anybody else wants to just uh, type in questions, they can do it in the chat box or unmute themselves and speak to uh, Dr. Marian directly. Okay. Uh, Sandy Dias is asking. Um, uh, someone is asked it. Uh, be good for hair, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Brahmi, yes, this Brahmi is good for hair. It gives nice black lustrous hair. And besides that, if you have any stress, uh, you can just use it in coconut oil. You know, boil it in coconut oil and make a nice hair oil of it, and you can use it as a hair oil. so you it helps you sometimes calm your stress and if you're watching the laptop or your uh, screen time spending too much time on the screen it's a good thing for you know as a stress buster so yes okay uh, as you can see there are a lot of compliments coming in uh, the session was very wonderful thank you ma'am i think most of the uh, messages in the chat box are regarding the program and the talk being very informative i would like oh. uh, frederick sir to take over i'm just back i'm just back uh, shivani aya has a comment that in kankona many people consume one wild vegetable called shirmandoli may i know some uses of that vegetable shirmandoli if i'm pronouncing it right uh mm -hmm. I have no idea. I have heard of this. Can anyone just uh, can you send me a picture, or is it possible uh, if I see a picture of it? Okay, okay, fine, fine, Shivani. Okay, okay, yeah. I'll await it, and then I can. Miriam, if you want to share your contact so that people can continue contacting you. Yeah. 
So I am available on my phone number, of course, which has WhatsApp. It's 9822-714-354. It's there at the bottom of the slide. Okay. I'm also on Instagram as Dr. Marianne Lobo, my handle, and Plant Walks Goa. And uh, also, uh, I have these two uh, Instagram handles. I also have a page on Facebook, which is called as Ayurveda in Goa. So these are my contact details that you can get in touch with me where I share a lot of plants. Of course, Plant Walks Goa is a... Uh, yes, yes, Frederick, thank you so much for adding that. Uh, and yes, Plant Walks Goa official is the page of mine uh, on the Instagram where I share a lot of the plants. And quite recently, I shared a plant that needs to be verified and taken under an Ayurvedic practitioner, but which is also used in the treatment of Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and very much widely available in Goa, but which many people did not know about. So yeah, you can go and study and learn more. And of course, you can join me for my walks. Just DM me. I have these walks happening once a week. And of course, on re request, I also do some special like a family walk sometimes. Families contact me when they want an exclusive family walk. I also do family walks. And then, of course, there are mothers that contact me for children's walks. I also do separately children's walks because a children's walk is more uh, children-centric. And, uh, you know, we have more quizzes, more more fun, and try to make it a lot more fun. Miriam, I'm just wondering if there are any people practicing traditional healing in Goa still, and if so, how many and where? Okay, uh, I think very, very few are there left. I'm told in Bori, there is one. Bori Shiroda, there is one. And of course, uh, uh, what you call that, there was this one lady in Kandoli who used to shir katottali, as they say, which was called as Veni section, which is also one of these traditional healing practices, which was to control blood sugar levels and uh, BP, uh, to bring the BP in check. Now, whether she still practices, because still two years back or three years back, she was still doing it. Now, post-COVID, I don't know, because, you know, blood and all these things getting involved. So whether she would be still doing. And of course, in pockets, I heard in Aldona, there's one person who gives some medicine for stones. So like this, there are still some available. And then again, in Nuwe, there is one lady, but I don't know how much of her whereabouts is where, specifically in Nuwe. She again gives medicine for Kaikoi or uh, jaundice, as it is called. Veni section is it is it the same thing as bloodletting with uh, leeches? Yes, thing, but again, bloodletting is two types. One is veni section and one is leeches. Leeches, I myself do because again, you cannot put leech on any uh, you know uh, med uh, anywhere just like that. You need to know exactly on which particular vein you have to put the leech. You can't put it on an artery, and you cannot. There are certain essential points that are there in the body. That is where you put the leech. Even the veni section is done at certain areas, which they knew it. So Alice Matthias is also um, adding some information here that they have someone in Sinkeri too who gives medicine for jaundice. I think there's someone across the Goa border in Sindhudurg also for jaundice. Yes, yes. In Sindhudurg there is someone. You have, what's, what's your opinion on the bone setters, the traditional bone setters of Goa? You know, while they get a bad press and people turn them as quacks and things like that, I also know that they produce results in that sense. No, Although it yes. is... Yes, yes. Now, I have a personal encounter again with a tribal in Kankon, which was taken by a nun from Shanti Avedna. She had taken me there long. This is like uh, 21 years back when I was still a student. And that's how, again, I had a chance of interacting with the tribals. He was also a bone setter kind of a thing. He would set the bones of the back exclusively. So, yes, these bone setters are good, you know, taking whatever medicines that you, because see, they only give an external medicine. There's no harm in taking it and applying it. I really do. I only feel it is jealousy and sometimes maybe because, see, there is no documented proof. So what happens is easy for a modern practitioner, medicine practitioner to raise, you know, doubts and call it quackery. Do of course, once in a way, to be fair, they overstate their case and they say we can cure AIDS and those kind of things and that... Uh... Kind Frederick, of tends the question again, your motorcycle, <laughs> there was a motorcycle. No, 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 sorry, sorry. So, so you know, once in a way, they, uh, they, uh, you know, the, the, they stretch credibility a bit by saying that we can cure AIDS and those kind of things. So, so there is a bit of a credibility crisis sometimes, but very often, uh, more often than not, they, they are also dismissed unnecessarily, you know, in that sense. Yes, yes. 
and that is why we need to you know at least uh, i i will you know i tell them also like you know it's not very difficult for that tribal there in kankon to have done it because he was at that time already 75 but the younger generation like in santa cruz there is they have started slowly you know writing down cases keeping case history where they can prove yes they use this pap they use that medicine and this effect was there so this way also you are rebuffing somebody saying that you're just quackery so your grandmother's lip what exactly was it mirian if i could ask yeah so i have basically zeroed down on just about 35 different uh, plants that were there and okay. uh, this were different different one of them was distichi pan you know i can share that with you and the other one was of course uh, she would use aboli chipana the simple aboli leaf and uh, of course you know uh, every single thing that grew around has some medicinal and anti inflammatory value so these plants are very much there available in nature i have uh, written some of them in the book some of them are not available now so for to make this pap myself which i'm also making and i have you know it ready to for people to come and uh, take it this things i have had to even go as far as to the forests of bicholim and ponda to get them because now all these leaves are not available around like before i'm really sorry that we i seem to have lost some questions because i was logged out of the system and i logged back in again okay okay so, so if if you all see any in the chat box mirian or if someone feels that we have not answered their question please uh, feel free to raise it in the meanwhile i would like to add that yesterday last night while i was just going through some earlier books i found that uh, you know dominic fernandez our friend from anjuna has documented very nicely the story of who used to be a lady who used to be called voijin mai voijin mai she was a traditional healer in the village voijin means a lady doctor or little doctor or whatever and she had her own medicines for a lot many things and today actually her grandson is a is a is a allopathic doctor who also uses a bit of uh, traditional remedies and he is very popular in in the village of of anjuna so there is a lot of uh, faith and belief in the traditional things which we cannot throw out of the window and you know just just an observation other questions please feel free even if you want to unmute yourself we have some time left feel feel free to go ahead if you all typed in something which we overlooked you're welcome Frederick may i say something about more about the voyagings please please okay so no oh, we would like to uh, listen to the motorcyclist first <laughs> so the voyagings as they are called are the basically plant medicine women women okay and uh, one very rare thing that i again you know came upon because i dealt with a filipino i spoke to another filipino lady and there was another mexican lady that i interacted with and many a times the passing down of information on medicinal plants happened to be only through ladies i have no clue as yet as to why it happened other than the fact that also the child bearing capacity might be with a woman but uh, i have doc uh, also come across and found out that every culture be it peruvian be it brazilian be it mexican be it filipino or southeast asian sri lankan there were these practice of plant medicine women and they are the ones that practiced you know and kept this practice of traditional medicine practice still going and still happening and i'm so happy yesterday when you know uh, frederick shared this account of this lady virgin mai it is so beautiful please if any one of you all have these memories you know and write it down make it in the form of an article blog about it please preserve these little things that can be done let each one you know put an effort to just find out in your neighborhood if they still exist anyone we seem to have finished a whole lot of questions but uh, i will proceed therefore with the vote of thanks i am so grateful to maryan and to everyone at the clc and of course to everyone in the audience uh, first a word about the clc we are just trying to share knowledge here it's a voluntary group there are many people in the group so i am sometimes the face sorry i should say the voice behind the group 
So people think I do the work. It's nothing like that. There are a whole big team, starting with Savio, who seems sees to the tech side, and uh, Professor Emilia and Father Mervin, and a whole lot of other volunteers uh, whose names uh, you know slip me as of now. But we are grateful to each and every one of them, and uh, they have helped a lot to make this happen. Secondly, uh, the audience has shown a lot of patience to come back. Uh, we had a bit of a glitch. On the earlier occasion, this time too, there were some problems with the with the net and with the thunder and all that. But in spite of it, uh, Marianne has seen it through and seen it through very bravely. She's taken a lot of trouble to present her thoughts, to share her ideas, and to share her time and knowledge. And of course, with all with all generosity, because our talks are are not uh, paid for, and no one gets paid for speaking. And of course, we don't charge anything to join the talks. So it's a it's a fair and square exchange, at least we think. <laughs> So, so please, uh, uh, you know, share your information with others. We are trying to build this into a small network, which uh, provides a platform for people to uh, to pass around their information. So that, you know, when you share ideas, it only knowledge only increases. No one is losing anything, but uh, both sides are gaining. So, like you know, uh, this talk will be available like all our other talks uh, on the Collaborative Learning Cafe page on uh, YouTube. So if you go to YouTube and just search for Collaborative Learning Cafe Goa, you will find uh, this talk maybe in a day or two, and uh, yeah, and all the other talks also are are, are there, including an earlier talk by uh, Doctor Father Ignasi Muttu, which covers the medicinal plants of South India from that perspective. So thank you everyone, thank you for being with us and for for uh, for having the patience and on a rainy wet day to come and uh, share share this uh, interesting topic. As I always say, this is the start. We have not finished our work. We have only started our work. And we would be very happy if some network grows out of this. Okay, we don't have to be pushing the network. We don't have to be running it. Anyone can take it forward. If you would like to uh, take it forward, please get in touch with one of us. Okay, uh, Collaborative Learning Cafe has its own website. There's a Facebook page. You can always share your comments on it. We are very grateful to all of you all. Thank you, everyone who is uh, who is. Who is yeah? Who is uh, who is appreciating the talk? Uh, I'll just pass it on to Marianne, who wants to have a few words in conclusion. Uh, you know, thank you so much, uh, the Collaborating Learning Cafe. Thank you so much, Father Mervin, Savio, Chris Lynn, Frederick Norona. I mean, he's been so generous in even telling me come over here if there is a network issue and there was such a storm and everything. And I really didn't know how I would manage. But you know, thank each and every one of you also for being there. And thank you for attending despite such a stormy weather today and so much of thundering. So I really thank you for being such an attentive audience and uh, wishing you all all the best. Thank you very much.